But I do want to get back to the inconsistency thing because it does hover around a specific player, in my opinion, as well. And that's Kemba Walker, right? Kemba, as much as, you know, look, he's still finding his way a little bit as he didn't play basketball, organized basketball for a very, very long time. He's just coming back into the fray. He's starting to get his feet wet. But you see what happens when he's not totally on for that game. I mean, you look at his past couple of games, he's had some good ones. But his shot has been off in a lot of games. And sometimes the misses, Chris, there were several, again, what was he, two for 14 or whatever, against Phoenix on that road trip. Some of those misses were absolutely brutal. A buddy of mine texted me. He was like, you got to be kidding me on this Kemba number. And I said, because he has him on, you know, his fantasy basketball team. <laughs> yeah. I said, honestly, they, it even was worse than the number because he's, cl- I mean, he is clanking shots mm. off the backboard that, I mean, basically I would do it in an NBA game. So, you know, I, I don't want to pile it all on Kemba because he's been, you know, he's been really good in certain spurts. He's been not so great in certain spurts, but if the shot's not falling and he's not getting to the free throw line, which he hasn't done a whole lot of this year, you know, they're in a little bit of trouble because they need, because their defense isn't that great. Let's get Let's just get to that point. They need all the offense they can get. And if Kemba's not going to supply it for him, then I'm not quite sure where else it comes from. Yeah. I mean, the whole, it's been said a million times, but the whole thing with this team is, you got to make life easier for Jalen Brown and for Jason Tatum. And that starts with Kemba Walker being effective on the offensive side of the ball. You got to pull attention away from Tatum and away from Brown. And he did that against Toronto. I mean, he was in 30 minutes, he had 21 points. He was six of six from the free throw line, which is his most free throw attempts. in I think since he's come back. Yeah. Yeah, So (laughs) yeah, you're right. So, I mean, that's a positive and he's moving in the right direction, but you're right. Like, the inconsistencies have been uh, a little more drastic than they have been in the past with Kemba. And it's, it's tough. I mean, if he starts getting on the line a little bit more and can find a little comfort inside the arc, because that's really where his issues have been. He was four of 20 against Phoenix and those four buckets were three pointers. He's just not scoring inside. Part of that is getting to the free throw line, but you need him to be effective just to make life easier for Tatum and for Brown. And when that doesn't happen again, it, it's right back to that trickle down effect. There's nowhere else for that really to go for that production to go. And so that's a real problem. I mean, the thing is they're going to have to figure it out because for the time being, he's not playing back to back. So you're going to have to go against like Detroit last night. You're going to have to play without him. Right. So it's not like you can just rely on Kemba having these great nights and helping ease the load off the top of the roster, because there's going to be probably one game a week where you're not going to play with him. So So that's going to be something they're going to have to adjust to. And it's worth noting that Pritchard has made that portion of Brad Stevens' life tremendously easier, Um, really on both sides of the ball. Pritchard's been pretty good defensively too. So that's been a huge – That yeah, that's that's been a huge impact. But, I mean, you'd like to see Kemba grab that rhythm as things move forward. But I've I've said it elsewhere too – it, it really is like he didn't come back all that long ago and I'm not going to keep defending him again and again and again, but it does take some time to kind of gain that rhythm back. And it's difficult when he's not playing back to backs and he didn't go through training camp. And like, that's, that's really hard. And from a mental perspective, it's probably difficult for him to go back to his old self where he's taking these hard cuts and these hard change of directions and change of pace where you know, his knee probably still is not a hundred percent. And so that has to be a difficult adjustment too. So in my ideal scenario, in my ideal mind, there's a, there's a world where he can slowly work back to his old self in the next month or so. Where's, where's your concern level at here? Because you know, it's, this is, again, it's a shortened season. You have, you know, a guy that's not going to play in back to backs and his rhythm is just completely off. And this team, in order to get, look, this team, you go to the Eastern conference finals so many times, like you got to get over that hump. And, you, and now, you know, with the consistency that Jalen and Jason have shown you, like these two guys are ready. You get, these guys are ready. They're ready yeah. for that next step, but they can't get there by themselves in this Eastern conference. There are too many good teams. I mean, maybe in the older days of the East from the West, the West is still stacked. I'm not saying it's not, but you know, the East has been weaker notably throughout the years this year. It's not going to mm-hmm. be, it's you know, a little bit, a little bit more even because the Nets have a full arsenal of Kyrie, Harden and 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 uh, and and KD and you know you have the Sixers a different coach look way different you know you you're gonna need Kemba Walker to be Kemba Walker for you to get past those teams right so 
where are you at here? I, I, Cause we had Sean Devaney on last week and you know, we're, we're, and we got killed for this and I, and I don't really mind it. I, I the fact that you all are going to kill us for it doesn't bother me at all, but he, the conversation needs to be had. He's like, I've called up some people around the league and you know, you couldn't give Kemba Walker away right now with the way he's playing and the way that contract is. So that's to me a little concerning because you're, you're counting on him to be a focal point of your offense to help Jason and Jalen, you know, get a little bit of a breather here and there. And if he's not going to do that, this team is nowhere near the team that they need to be to get to the NBA finals. So if, if that's going to be the case, where's your concern level here with Kemba Walker? Yeah. My, my concern level with Walker is, is probably lower than most people for the okay. time being that leash, that leash is shortening right. game by game. Right. Because that, that inconsistency is still at the forefront. So it's certainly uh, not heading in the right direction, but my concern is definitely lower than most people. Again, for the reasons I mentioned before, I have some confidence that he can kind of regain that consistency and find that rhythm at some point. He, It's just the situation he was thrust into from a health perspective is a really difficult one. And so I don't think it's fair to fully judge where he is right now, as it will be three weeks from now, as it will be five weeks from now. Um that being said, my concern from a Celtics perspective, kind of with what you said, it is a little bit higher just because you have two guys playing at an all NBA level, right? You have, you have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum who are undoubtedly playing all NBA basketball right now. And you need to, as I said before, make life easier for them. You need to, you need to take advantage of that. And so that's why the trade talk is out there. And that's why the urgency among Celtics fans to get Kemba back to what he's supposed to be is so heightened at the moment. And I completely understand that. I, yeah. You go on Twitter and there's plenty of overreactions and people are All freaking out. Yeah. And that's just, that's just what Twitter is, whatever. That's fine. But I think to expect Kemba to be full boat right away was uh, a little bit of a, of a reach. Mm. However, he, he hasn't been good and he's been inconsistent and that's certainly a problem. But I, I think that the concern with Kemba is what it does to the ceiling for the Celtics. Uh, I, from a personal like Kemba perspective, I think he'll be okay. Uh, but I don't know. I mean that in terms of trading Kemba, like I know there's been a lot of chatter about that, but that contract just is really not, not that tradable. And the, I talked about this with Nicole Yang and Tom Westerholm earlier this week, there is a, a lowered trade market for him right now. Like there was, there were years ago where Kemba has this mammoth contract well, he's Kemba. So you're willing to take that on and you're willing to try to find some matching numbers and teams are going to be willing to move forward with that. His market is is shrunk at the, at the moment just because of his need and because of his inconsistent play. And so that contract is definitely a turnoff for teams, whereas in the past teams might have been able to deal with it. So that being said, also, I don't really think the Celtics are looking to move Kemba. I mean, I'm sure there have been discussions maybe in the offseason, maybe there will be again because that's just the way front offices work. But I, I don't think that's uh, really a, an option going forward right now. Yeah.